Hello, this is Sim Racing Corner. In this video, I'm going to run through a quick start guide for Joy to Key. Uh, this program is very useful for sim racers who have button boxes, uh, multiple wheels, and shifters. Joy to Key allows you to configure button presses into keyboard strokes that can be shared across any number of USB game controllers. And these can be saved as profiles in the software. And this is essential if you have buttons on different devices that you need to map to the same in-game binding. Um, Joy to Key helps you with this. A good example is having multiple wheel rims, um, each with its own button box, and having to normally remap in-game bindings each time you swap the wheel around. Uh, Joy to Key will save you a lot of hassle in this respect. Also, uh, Joy to Key can emulate a mouse controller, which I found very useful for my setup, as I don't have room for a mouse. I'm using a cheap gamepad um, as my mouse controller, which you can see mounted in this picture. All of the above is covered in this tutorial, plus a couple of other tips. Uh, there's timestamps in the video if you want to skip certain parts of the tutorial. Okay then, let's get down to it. So this is my controller. It's a cheap controller. It's like three pounds on eBay. Um, and you can see it's like a retro controller with D-pad and some uh, buttons here. And if you see on screen, it's moving the mouse. Because we're using Joy to Key to remap these buttons into mouse movements. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So put the controller down for the moment. And if we go into the software, uh, we got this is my setup I've already made. So I will create a new one as a dummy. So I call this test. So there's nothing working here, it's all blank. And when you create a new one, what will happen is you'll see it's going to show these tabs up here and I'll just say it will always default to two joysticks uh, and basically any joystick um, it basically refers to any uh, USB device so that could be a button box um, or a pad or you know my sequential shifters no matter what it's just going to be listed as a joystick um, the thing is I've got more than two USB devices installed so we need to change that and, and add the others so you go into options and you can see it says nine joysticks detected and here you can add in whatever number you want. So let's put in nine, because we have nine showing there. And configure. And now we have nine tabs. So each one of those represents one of my different devices. Uh, what I don't, I don't know why it adds some with these uh, colors. I don't understand why it does that. And some it doesn't, because these are all basically registered uh, devices. But somehow it gives, uh, assigns these kind of colored tabs. I don't know why, but it does. Um, if someone knows, maybe they can tell me, but nevertheless. Right, so the first thing we want to do is find out which device is this corresponding to that. Um, so if you just click on one of the buttons, it will kind of show you and the tab is now is activating and showing it's kind of flashing. So if we go to the tab and we click any of the buttons, you can see it's uh, showing me what it's corresponding to. Okay, so that's good. So we want to we want to kind of focus our attention on the D-pad. And if we look at the left one, it's saying left stick. It recognises the left stick, uh, but at the moment it's just um, a, a generic button, uh, left stick kind of button. So we want to change that to the mouse. So we double click it and we go to mouse and this is mouse movement. So for the left, we want the cursor to move left. So you can move it to whatever and that's going to be like the speed of it. Um, I think around 40 is quite good. Uh, so 41 will do. And if we OK that, we click out. Now the mouse is moving left. Obviously it's only left. So uh, as we set it, but you can see it's moving it because we've now set it here. Uh, so we do for the rest of them, we need to go back in and uh, so for the right one, same again, go to mouse, uh, move it to what, 41, that'll do, click out, and you can see now we've got left and right, and uh, yeah, so forth, whoops, uh, up, okay, down, whoops, mouse, down, okay, and uh, and we just, we just save it as well. Uh, you need to save it because otherwise it won't save any of the uh, your settings you've applied. So make sure you save regularly. Um, don't forget 
now we have a full mouse movement, as you can see here. And we start with these buttons. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make that into the left mouse button. So uh, let's go back into the software, and that is button 9. So we go in here, and we change that to mouse mouse button left. Okay, and assign it, okay it, and now it will act as a as a button. We can uh, you can see. Oops. Oh. Yeah, if you, if you actually, um, if, the, if the software is highlighted, it kind of disables the mouse movement, but you can see, yep, so, yep, now it's the left mouse button now. Um, and yep, we can do, you can do, you can assign whatever you want to these as well. Um, you know, that could be mouse, mouse button, right mouse button, click, could be middle mouse, or whatever you want to do on these. Uh, but for me, uh, because it's just for in-game uh, usage, I just need a left click and the mouse movement. Uh, and these I might kind of change to escape or something and, uh, you know, maybe a couple of in-game uh, buttons, you know, look left and right maybe or look back, whatever I fancy. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's how we turn a very cheap controller into a uh, mouse controller. If you have a Fnatic Rim or a uh, fancy button box which has a analog stick like this, we can also make that into a uh, joystick as well to move the mouse. Um, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so this is uh, this device is Joystick 9, I've already checked on our list, but as you can see it's not, I mean, you can see it's doing these other buttons, but, but when I move the analog stick around, it's not showing any kind of activation there. So the first thing I need to go to is you go to the options here, and under, under stick and uh, pov, change that to show all axes, there you go, select that. Now if we go back, you can see it's now added these, uh, this device, this uh, stick on here. So now we can just, uh, we can change this and add that. So, okay, so what's left? Left is slider two, so let's go straight to that one. And if we go to mouse and move the mouse cursor, we'll do it all the way this time. And then we see, we can see it's moving. And because it's um, and because it's uh, uh, it's analog and it's kind of you know, it, it moves as quickly as you uh, you know it, it, it'll, you can kind of keep the speed down by just moving the stick uh, less. Uh, so yeah, we can just move the slide all the way to the left. But you can of course um, change the sensitivity by reducing that number. Um, go back in and let's change the right side. And up. Down. Da, da, da. Else down. Okay, let's just save that. Okay, now we have a quite handy little uh, mouse controller. Okay, easy. Right then, uh, next I want to show you how to uh, map buttons to keyboard strokes. Uh, and the reason why you might want to do that is if you have multiple wheel rims and you may have a separate button box, you might want to map, um, say, pit on this rim, and you also want to pit, uh, map the pit button on, say, a button box or another rim. And the problem is, in game, you only can map the button to one device, which does mean you have to then keep on uh, changing, uh, you know, remapping everything in game, which is quite a pain to do that. Um, and another reason is, another one thing is useful is for sequential shifters like this. Um, so that'll be our up shift, and that's our down shift. And if we can map that to a button, in game, we can then then map the, the up shift to just a keystroke uh, in for every device. So in other words, so that's our up shift, and I'll show you what we're doing on this one. So if we go into button nine, and say for instance, we make our up shift uh, Q, Let's type in Q, there you go. So, oops, 
Flick off it. There you go. You see it's activating Q there. And so button 12. I'll make that A. A. Okay, so that's all good for this uh, device. But what if, say, we want to now bring in our Husenfeld sequential shifter. So what we need to do is map the upshifts to Q and downshifts to A again. So we can see it's joystick 2, it's flashing there. And uh, let's find out where the, where the button is. It's not there. Oops, line 2? Yeah. Somewhere here. There they go. Oh, I swear, okay, so upshifts. Q. Downshifts. A. Just save that. Okay, so we can test that. So now, basically, on both these devices, they're both activating just key presses instead at the same time. And we can test that. We, we just open Notepad. Oops. Excuse me. There you go. Q, A, Q, A. Bring in the Fanatic wheel. Q, upshift, A, downshift. And there you go. So you can do this across many devices, and this just saves you a lot of hassle. Um, and also, if you're in game and you have the, both these things connected at the same time, if I change car, I don't have to remap the keys anymore, these, the, these shifters. I can just use them as I wish. So that's really handy. There you go. Uh, yeah, one thing you should probably do, actually, if you're going to be mapping a lot of um, buttons to keystrokes, uh, if you go back into the actual uh, assignment where we had signed it, you can add a comment here. So we can just call that, or we can call it upshift, downshift, and that just uh, makes it a bit easier. So if you have lots of buttons mapped, you're just going to know what's what um, for when you want to kind of refer back to it. And the other thing you can do as well is you can actually copy it. You can copy this um, this button to the clipboard. And you can then add it to another device. Say if you know that's another upshift on another device, you can then just uh, you can paste it in there, and then you can just do it across other ones. So you don't have to kind of just map them all individually. You can just if you do it once, you can then copy it across the different tabs, you know, and just um, and just add them like that way as well. But um, of course, that's not what well, doesn't really matter. We clear that anyway because we don't we don't need that. Okay, there's something important you need to remember about USB devices on Windows. Um, this is the USB game controllers, so this is on Windows. And you can see there's a running order here. And what it can do is if you change the plugs around or to remove the device, this running order can change. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it will be a problem for Joy to Key uh, because Generically, when it's set up, it's just pointing towards this list in the running order. Um, so if that changes around, and the joystick, you know, this gamepad is no longer list is mapped to uh, the correct tab <clears throat> in this running order, it's going to be out of sync, and therefore your 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 uh, macros won't work. But there is a quick fix, and I'll show you what you need to do um, to fix that so yeah it'd be it'd be good if it was a little bit more clearer in the software but what we need to do so we're doing it on joystick 2 because I know that's our Houston fold shifter okay so joystick 2 we go to options and then go to configure and then advanced right so showing that device which is handy so that is and you can see it's going to be default to Windows, so it's going to be it's going to be relating to the running order here, which isn't what we want. We want to make sure it's then pointing towards joystick two. So joystick two being that tab there, and our shifter. 
and if we okay that no matter what happens it's always going to be mapped correctly now if this running order changes so you need to do it for every every one of your joysticks so we go in there we oh devices joysticks if you know what i mean um go to options configure um formula rim is Is it ready on nine? Yeah, it's on nine, so that's fine. Um, I think I did that earlier. Uh, but yeah, so you have to do it on whatever devices you have. Just go through that and just keep on doing them all. Um, and this way you're gonna be you're gonna be safe. And uh, again, don't forget to save. <laughs> don't forget to save regularly. Okay, uh, one final thing I wanted to show you is um Joy to Key doesn't have an option in the settings to auto start with Windows. Uh, which is a bit inconvenient because this is a sort of program you kind of want to be starting up with Windows. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to uh, automatically add it to the startup folder. Uh, so first thing we do is this is our joy to key folder. And if we make a shortcut, uh, a quick shortcut, there you go, it's our software shortcut. And then we go to down here and we type in run. And here we type in this, well, I'll just paste it in, uh, shell colon startup, like so. Okay, and this will bring up our startup window folder. Anything we drop in here will start up with Windows automatically. So with our shortcut here, we just drag it into here. Remove that, just tidy it up. Whoops. Well, don't need any of that. Uh, but okay, so next time I, I launch Windows, it'll just start up automatically. Um, and uh, the default will be when you launch Joy to Key, it'll kind of start up as a window here, but you might want to start it minimize so it's just out of the way. And if you go to settings and preferences, you, you can then, here you go, because that'll be unchecked when you normally, so check that and okay that. And when you start Windows, it'll just start up in the background and be, be a taskbar uh, menu down here uh, and be out of the way. So until you want to use it. So nice and convenient. Okay, that's your lot for this video. Uh, Joy to Key does a few more tricks than what I've covered in this guide. Uh, but our focus was for sim racing, of course. Um, so that's all we needed to get into here uh, and how it can be useful for sim racers. Uh, Joy to Key is a great piece of software and I'm sure a lot of you can find it useful. If you found this video helpful, um, hit the like and subscribe, of course. Uh, I'll be back soon with another video, so stay tuned. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy simming and bye bye for now.